For most, fear of flying involves fleeting flashes of nerves during turbulence on a flight through stormy weather. Overcoming the white knuckle panic can help get you through the jitters. But what if nerves of steel are also the secret to actually surviving, or better yet, avoiding a mid-flight catastrophe? ABC's Jim Avila takes to the skies to find life-saving answers. Sometimes they get lucky. Little did the three passengers on board an antique plane in Idaho know that they would soon be filming a close call with death. Their private pilot, desperately trying to take off in a heavily loaded small plane at high altitude when it finally stalls into the treetops. The plane tumbles to the ground, camera still rolling. Passengers and pilot survive. But too often in general or private aviation, Luck is not enough. Just this weekend, there were nine fatalities in 11 small plane crashes nationwide. This twin-engine jet came down into a house in South Bend, Indiana, killing two. A twin-engine turboprop in Fort Lauderdale killed three when it crashed into an auto pound. The NTSB is so concerned with GA safety that we have placed this issue on our most wanted list of transportation safety improvements. In fact, while domestic commercial airplanes are on a safety streak of no fatalities in more than three years, small planes average five accidents a day. Nearly 500 Americans die in small planes each year. The leading cause of death is pilot loss of control. Almost all of these accidents are preventable and we've seen them before and unfortunately, unless things change, we will see them again. Which is why we went to the spin doctor, Rich Stoll. He says private pilots don't get the training they need to recover from emergencies. They have never done a spin until it's a fatal one. What kind of enemy is panic, which is what we all go through if we weren't practiced? Once we panic, it's over. So panic is really the, the precursor to lights out. And so by having some kind of a mental uh, routine that we can go through, a mental procedure, it takes us away from panic. So off we go to practice panic at 3,000 feet above the California soil. My plane intentionally entering a death spiral, too often for private pilots, their final view of Earth. The first time a pilot is in a spin is when they're in trouble. Yes, it, typically it'll be the last thing they ever see. Stoll teaches private pilots like me to overcome panic and human instinct to survive straight stalls where the plane stops in midair because it's climbing too fast and falls towards the ground. And when you feel that stall, just allow the stick to come forward. About two inches is all you really need. And try to relax when that happens. Next, the barrel roll, often caused by high wind or turbulence strong enough to push the wing upright and over. The turbulence could actually push you over, huh? Yes. Can, in a small plane. Can bank us over to the side or even get us upside down. Three, two, one, roll. Oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so not nearly as much nose attitude down. Still dramatic. Yeah, it's still a little unusual. On your, on your head. Yeah, there you go. I held on because I felt like I was going to go right. through the room. And finally, the combination dive to the ground and roll. The deadly spin toward the ground. Yo, baby. There we go. <laughs> And so we went around two times. This is the heading we started on. Right. There you go. A little bit of G's when you come out. A little out. bit of G on the pullout. I usually tell people the first thousand spins are the hardest. Right, like, I have no idea what you did to get out of that. For pilots, the most difficult lesson is to resist the temptation to pull up when going down. Because when an airplane stalls, it doesn't have enough speed to fly. So contrary to the natural impulse, the pilot must push the controls towards the ground to pick up enough speed to recover. The pilots typically freeze on the controls. And again, they typically they're occurring close enough to the ground that when they're entering the spin, it's already too late. So we have to replace that survival instinct with the brain telling the body, no, you have to do this and you have to do that. A full 97% of all aviation fatalities happen in small planes. Not all can be avoided with practice. This Idaho plane was doomed from takeoff too heavy to gain altitude in the mountains. But for many, experiencing the unthinkable from rolls to spins to dives before that critical life and death moment could save lives. 
For Nightline, I'm Jim Avila over Santa Paula, California.